Welcome back to Silent Hill. We've just unlocked the door in Alessa's room requiring the five artifacts. Let's go through. Do what mommy tells you now. I just want you to lend me a teeny bit of your power. That's all. No. I don't want to do it. It will make everyone happy. And it's for your own good, too. Oh, but mommy, I just want to be with you. Just two of us. Please understand. Oh, yes, I see. Maybe Mommy has been wrong. Mommy! Why didn't I see this before? There's no reason to wait. Herein lies the Mother's womb, containing the power to create life. I could have done it all myself. Mommy? Not entirely sure what they meant by that. I could have done it all by myself. They could have grown the seed inside of themselves? Well, well, well. To think you'd make it this far. Where's Cheryl? What have you done to her? What are you talking about? You've seen her many times restored to her former self. I'm in no mood for jokes. Don't you see? She's right there. That's absurd. You are the only one who thinks so. Why? Why are you doing this? It's been a long seven years. For the seven years since that terrible day, Alessa has been kept alive Suffering a fate worse than death. Alessa has been trapped in an endless nightmare from which she never awakens. He has been nurtured by that nightmare. Waiting for the day to be born. That day has finally come. The time is nigh. Everyone will be released from pain and suffering. Our salvation is at hand. This is the day of reckoning. When all our sorrows will be washed away. When we return to the true paradise. My daughter will be the mother of God! things to how they were before. Kaufman! Did I ask for this? Nobody uses me. 
You won't get away with this. Your work is us. We don't need you anymore. What do you think you could accomplish by coming here? My, aren't we getting cocky? Bet you can't see this. A glove it is! I thought I got rid of that! All I had to do was plant it somewhere for you to find. You all well, kept you busy. Ha! You're easy. And there's more where this came from. Stop it! Huh? What the? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Easy fight, right? By the way, I don't have very much ammo. Uh, quick recap, or uh, thoughts from the cutscene. Um, good job, Kaufman. Also, what do they have in their briefcase that they need it everywhere they go? It's like they're they're always about to make some calls and check the stock market, even when they're in basically literal hell. Uh. I'm having a little bit of trouble following the story. So Alessis has been kept alive for sort of half dead, basically, after the accident that left them all burned, I think. They've been kept alive for seven years in an endless nightmare stuck here. And that's used as some sort of food for the demon. Because Dahlia said that it, like, fed on that as it grew. And it was inside of Alessa. I mean, it came out of them. And they said that the seed was inside of them. But what, what about the cutscene before saying, like, ah, yes, I've seen all along. I could have done it myself. But then they didn't do it themselves? Or, or what? Because I took that to mean grow the seed inside of Dahlia. But it doesn't look like they did? Also, what was Kaufman talking about with the, uh, I forgot what they called it, but the the vial of, of drug thing. The vial of drug thing, you know the thing. <laughs> they said that, like... So Dahlia said, I thought I got rid of that. And then Kaufman said something like, "I all I needed to do was, like, hide it somewhere where you'd find it or something like that? I, I don't know, like, I'm sorry, was the plan all along for Harry to find it in the motorcycle and then Kaufman to take it from them? Why did... I... Okay. Anyway, we're gonna fight a demon now. I don't have very much ammo. I'm scared. I'm probably gonna die. Let's go. Is Coffin still here, by the way? Where? Coffin's gone. Okay. Alright, I'm almost dead. Um, I still have a camera with a flash. Maybe I can scare it? Uh, I have 45 pistol bullets, actually. That's not bad. Two shotgun rounds and six rifle. God, these noises are horrible. Oh. 
Okay. I don't know if there's a way to dodge that. I was running and it still hit me. Try number two. I just did a save state as well, so I could skip a little bit of time. Whoops. I saw some blood hitting the ground, but otherwise I can't even see it. It's up in the air. Yeah, let's go right now. There must be something I can do. Maybe the spikes. Maybe I can hide behind the spikes to protect me from the lightning or something? I see blood hitting the ground, but that's good. Okay, that definitely didn't work. Okay, I now have one health drink left, and I've used literally all of my gun ammo. And this thing does not seem to want to come to the ground, so somebody tell me, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> um... How do I do any damage to it? Uh... I, there's gotta be something I can do with the environment, right? There has to be something, some tactic. Surely it's not just shoot it a bunch and keep healing when you take damage. Okay, after like 10 attempts, I finally found a strategy that actually does something. If you not only run, uh, if you not only run, but also move around in a circle like this, so you're turning and running at the same time, then you will dodge all the lightning attacks. So it looks like they predict where you're going, so if you move in a straight line, they'll hit you, but if you turn, then I guess they don't predict that. I don't know how much this really helps me, though, because I've hit it with every single round that I have, and it still doesn't die, and it's not touching the ground, so I can't hit it with a melee weapon, so there must be something else I can do, but what? Okay, well, I spent like a good 30 minutes trying out different tactics on that boss, thinking there was some special way to do something, like make it shock the spikes, and then that would, I don't know, <laughs> do something? Make it shock itself somehow? That's not possible. The only, literally the only thing of any use I discovered is that if you run in, uh, if you run in circles, you can dodge their attacks pretty much 100% of the time. That's great, but that doesn't actually make any progress. So after doing that for a half hour, I finally just googled it, and what I found is that this apparently is like the a horrendously, terribly, awfully designed boss. I can't even believe how terrible it is. I found a guide that said, shoot the boss ten times with a rifle. I've only got six rounds. I've tried shooting it those six rounds, plus the two shotgun rounds that I have, plus the like 30 or something uh, pistol rounds that I have, but apparently 30... Pistol rounds plus two shotgun shells do not equal four more rifle shots, I guess, or something. Because that doesn't kill it. I've also heard some people say something bizarre and, and very, uh, very nonspecific. Some people say that if you just kind of wait a while, like just live and run in circles, that the, the game will just end the fight for you. That sounds great, but I've already run in circles for like three minutes straight and nothing happened. If I have to run longer than that, I mean, Christ, my thumb's gonna die. Uh, another thing I've heard, the third way to defeat the boss, if you don't have the ammo to shoot it and kill it, and you don't feel like running around for an indeterminate amount of time in a circle, the third thing you can do is apparently if you don't have any ammo for your weapons, when you enter the fight, it, the boss fight just ends? Who? Why? Why would you design a boss this way? Anyway... We're gonna try that. I'm gonna shoot all of my rounds and we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh... Well, it hasn't ended, but... Maybe I'll run around for a little bit and maybe it'll end quickly? Oh, no, no, don't die. All right, circles we go again. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Just run around for like 20 seconds. Okay. Sure. Where the hell were you, dude? Guess they were so bland they momentarily became invisible. Yeah, drag him to hell. Okay, uh, a lot happened there. Let's finish with some thoughts on Silent Hill. First thing I want to say is I'm just trying to purge out of my mind that entire last boss fight. That was horrendous, it was horrible, oh my god, it was so bad, it was so bad, it was so bad? That was a bad experience. So, purge that from my mind. Let's look at other stuff. First thing I want to go over is I've caught the plot for Silent Hill up on the Wikipedia page. I pulled it up on my phone and I want to read it because I have no idea what the hell is really going on other than some just very, very vague ideas of Alessa being impregnated sort of with a demon seed, metaphorically, I think, I hope, and then giving birth to it sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's read the plot from Wikipedia. Because I'm sure this has been crafted by people with deep, deep Silent Hill lore knowledge from probably the future games and stuff like that. So, let's begin. Silent Hill opens with Harry Mason driving to the titular town with his young daughter Cheryl for a vacation. At the town's edge, he swerves his car to avoid hitting a girl in the road. As a result, he crashes and loses consciousness. Waking up in town, he realizes that his daughter is missing and sets out to look for her finding the town deserted and foggy, with snow falling out of season. During his journey, he begins to experience bouts of unconsciousness and nightmares filled with hostile creatures. He encounters police officer Sybil Bennett, who works in the nearby town of Brams. A fortune-telling cultist, Dahlia Gillespie, who gives him a charm, the uh, Floros, and hints at his daughter's whereabouts. Dr. Michael Goffman, director of Silent Hill's Alcamilla Hospital. A nurse suffering from amnesia, Lisa Garland, who worked at Alcamilla. He also encounters a symbol throughout the town which Dahlia claims will allow darkness to take over the town if it continues to multiply. Eventually he realizes and explains to Sybil that this darkness is taking over the town and is responsible for the disappearance of the citizens and transforming it into someone's nightmare. According to Dahlia, the girl from the road is a demon responsible for the symbol's duplication. 
She urges him to stop the demon, because if he does not, Cheryl's life will be sacrificed to the demon. Dahlia urges Harry to stop the town from becoming a total apocalypse of demonic possession <laughs> by using the Floros. Harry soon finds himself attacked by Sybil, who has become possessed by the girl's power who has become possessed by the girl's power via parasite implant. It's it's weird, but it has a citation, so Sybil was taken over by the girl's power via parasite implant. What does that mean? Parasite implant? Anyway, then it goes on to say something really interesting. The player must choose whether to save her or not. Save Sybil Bennett or not. So apparently there's some way to actually save Sybil Bennett during that whole fight scene on the carousel. I have no idea how. I, I, what could I have done? I'm just thinking back to it. I had to hit them a bunch. I had to dodge their gunshots. Um, there was the wheelchair that they got out of, and I was wondering if I could do something with that, but it didn't seem like it. I mean, I, I tried to use it, and I couldn't couldn't interact with it at all. Other than that, Sybil sometimes would ride on the, the horses and <laughs> laugh demonically, but that didn't seem to do anything. So how could I have saved her? I don't know, but uh, apparently you can, and that plays into some of the endings that you'll see described here in just a minute. When Harry next encounters the form of the teenage girl, he demands to know where Cheryl is, but is refused. Soon afterwards, she is paralyzed by the Floros that Harry was carrying. Dahlia appeared and revealed that she manipulated Harry into catching her daughter. Alessa, since only he could approach her, apparently due to his connection with Cheryl and her reaching out to him. Alessa possesses vast reality warping powers to manifest objects into reality and uses that power to previously escape a spell cast upon her by her mother to torture her within a nightmare, forcing her to cry out for help from Cheryl. I don't know what that sentence just meant. <laughs> Together, Dahlia and Alessa transport away using the Floros. Harry awakens in a logicless void known only as Nowhere and encounters Lisa again, who realizes she is the same as them and begins transforming. He flees horrified. Her diary reveals that she nursed Alessa during a secret forced hospitalization. Harry soon finds Dahlia along with the apparition of Cheryl and Alessa. Charred. Charred. I don't remember that. Seven years earlier, Dahlia had conducted a ritual that impregnated Alessa with the cult's deity through immolation. Alessa survived because her status as the deity's vessel rendered her, render, rendered her immortal. Her resistance to the ritual caused her soul to be bisected, preventing the birth. Okay, let's just pause for a second. Seven years earlier, Dolly had conducted a ritual that impregnated Alessa with the cult's deity through immolation. So, yeah, I knew that Alessa had been burned in some accident, but I thought it was actually an accident. And it's not something that Gillespie actually wanted. I, I thought the accident had kind of messed up Gillespie's plans, right? Like, Alessa is the vessel that's going to give birth to this, to this demon, but now here she is, half dead. So that messes everything up, but according to this, it was on purpose? They were burned on purpose? And I guess maybe Gillespie knew that they would be kept alive past when they should be because of the power of the demon within them? Um, her resistance to the ritual caused her soul to be bisected, preventing the birth. One half, here's a, here's a big thing, one half of her soul went to baby Cheryl, whom Harry and his wife had adopted. I want to say that again. One half of her soul, when it was bisected in the ritual, went to baby Cheryl, whom Harry and his wife had adopted. Dahlia then cast a spell that would draw it back to Alessa. Sensing Cheryl's return, Alessa manifested the symbols in the town to prevent her capture and likewise the birth. During the endings in which Sybil survives, Dolly reveals these symbols to be repellent and protective by nature. With Alessa's plan thwarted and her soul rejoined, the deity is revived and possesses her. Uh, okay, let me break a couple things down here that I'm, I'm getting from this. So Alessa did not want the ritual to go through, of course. I guess that's why their soul was bisected or whatever during the ritual. Their body was taken over and, you know, their soul was partially controlled by this demon, but also part of them went on to continually resist it and try to stop it from happening, stop the birth from happening. So, Alessa manifested the symbols in the town to prevent her capture and likewise the birth? 
So the symbols were to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Gillespie wanted Harry to stop, like, she said the symbols appearing all over town are, like, bringing everything into darkness. But obviously Gillespie was just using Harry. They actually wanted the whole world to become dark and for this demon to be born. So the symbols were not because of Gillespie, they were because of Alessa. Trying to prevent themselves from getting captured. They were on the run, basically. Their soul was sort of on the run. Okay, so one half of her soul went to baby Cheryl, whom Harry and his wife had adopted. Dahlia then cast a spell that would draw it back to Alessa. So we have both the... When, when Alessa's soul was bisected, we have Alessa's part, like Alessa directly, and then we have the part of their soul sort of indirectly by way of Cheryl, who they manifested and caused their birth somehow, and then Harry adopted them. So, Dahlia's plan when they cast a spell to draw it back to Alessa... I don't know where people got this information from, by the way. I don't remember anything in the game that suggested that Dahlia cast a spell that drew Cheryl back to Alessa, but I don't know, maybe it's in the other endings or something. They were trying to get Cheryl to come back to the town because they wanted to... Like, they needed to put the soul back together, didn't they? To, for the birth to happen. With the soul in totally different parts, the birth couldn't happen, right? So that's why they wanted Cheryl to come back. So Cheryl sort of existed. I mean, Cheryl definitely existed for quite a few years. They were birthed and adopted. But it sort of seems like once they entered Silent Hill, they almost didn't really exist anymore. Uh, I guess it does end up eventually happening. Because it goes on to say, with Alessa's plan thwarted and her soul rejoined, the deity is revived and possesses her. So I guess Cheryl does get reabsorbed back into Alessa. But even before that, it doesn't even feel like they're real, you know? As soon as we enter Silent Hill, they become such a dream, Cheryl. Like, we see them in the distance, they disappear into the fog, we heard them on the phone once or something, I think? They became so distant and odd, but then again, I guess that's kind of the effect of Silent Hill, huh? Everything feels like a weird dream. I guess they were still a real person until they got absorbed by Alessa. What does it mean to be absorbed, by the way? They were a independent child? Independent person? You know, independent entity, and then suddenly they're just absorbed? What? Okay. Now about the endings. Four different endings are available depending on whether Harry saves Sybil or discovers a bottle of Aglaphotis. Aglaphotis? I'm probably mispronouncing it, but that's that weird vial of drug stuff. Um, depending on whether they save Sybil or discover that drug at Kaufman's apartment or both. Yeah, so I was thinking, what's the point of getting the truck thing? It didn't really help me progress. I didn't feel like it helped me progress, and it turns out it doesn't, actually. It only affects the ending, and you don't have to do it. It's optional. And also, there's definitely some other pretty big optional stuff. Like, remember the... What was it? It was like a... I think it was like a jackhammer or something that we found on that uh, bridge in that little building that I think we lowered the bridge from. Remember I found that and it said, like, it's out of fuel, and I never found any fuel? I'm pretty sure that that's, I guess, an optional, probably very powerful item that I could have gotten if I found gas for it. So there's definitely some optional stuff. I'm surprised that there's... I'm actually surprised that there's different endings. I kind of just expected there to be one. Okay, so skipping through the four endings to our ending. And by the way, the different endings are basically bad, bad plus, good or good plus. So we got the good ending, because Sybil's dead, but Coffin shows up with that drug. The good plus would be the same thing, except Sybil would be left alive. So good ending finds Sybil dead, Coffin shows up with the bottle of the drugs, which he then uses to force the deity out of Alessa. Kaufman is revealed to have secretly allied with Dahlia, and enabled Alessa's hospitalization. Feeling betrayed, he forces the deity out of Alessa, also causing her to vanish. After Harry defeats it, the deity disappears, and Alessa appears, who manifests a baby reincarnation of herself and Cheryl, gives it to Harry, enables their escape from the depths of nowhere and her nightmare, and then dies. So that's the good ending. Also, apparently there's a joke ending featuring extraterrestrials abducting Harry. <laughs> Wonder how you get the joke ending. Okay, here's something else I don't understand. 
So they throw that bottle of like, I don't know, anti-demonic drug juice. Like seriously, what the hell is that stuff? They throw that at Alessa and it forces the deity out of them. Isn't that causing the birth of the deity? Like the whole thing we were trying to stop in the first place? I mean, it came out of Alessa's body. It feels like a birth to me. Maybe it's fine that it was birthed because we killed it? Magically? With no ammo? <laughs> it just died? Also, that baby that Harry got, according to this, is a manifestation, uh, manifests, a uh, baby reincarnation of herself and Cheryl. So the baby is, what, a mixture of Alessa and Cheryl? It's like both kids, uh, both people in one? It's like a super baby? Like Harry just got a Cheryl Plus back? Except now they... <laughs> <laughs> now Harry has to raise them all over again. It's like, damn it, we just got out of diapers and now we're back. That's... That's weird. This plot is just like... It's bad. It's just a bunch of just... Weird nonsense. I don't like it, but I do understand it more after reading that Wikipedia article. Okay, terrible end boss fight and weird nonsense story aside. Let's look at the rest of Silent Hill. I'm surprised how much I liked Silent Hill. I freaking loved it. I, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I was thinking I would probably find quite a bit kind of aesthetically, thematically to like, because I, I like the weird nightmarishness of Silent Hill and the soundtrack and all of that. But I was expecting it to be extremely unpleasant to play. And I mean, it was in a good way because, you know, everything is nightmarish. But I was expecting like the controls would be extremely annoying and really get in the way. And I just wouldn't end up enjoying the experience all that much. But I did. Clunky controls aside, I actually super enjoyed playing it. Like I always, every time I ended an episode, I wanted to come back and play more. I was wondering how strongly Silent Hill established its aesthetic and everything that it's known for in the first game because I don't hear about the original Silent Hill nearly as often as I hear about something like Silent Hill 2, which I think is the most liked game in the series. So I was wondering if the first was maybe just kind of like a precursor to when Silent Hill actually got good, but no. Silent Hill was good right off the bat. Pretty much everything that I associate and like about Silent Hill is present here. It's got the, the thumping, disturbing industrial soundtrack slash ambient sounds. They're kind of one and the same. They sort of sound diegetic often. Um, it's got the messed up chain link rusty just hell hellish version of the world that you sometimes see. It's got locations that are just absolutely surreal and, and nonsensical in a really interesting and disturbing way. It's got all that stuff and when you mix it all together it makes for one hell of a strong atmosphere. Silent Hill is just so oppressive feeling. It sounds oppressive, it looks oppressive, it just feels oppressive. I was always running out of resources. I like how they seem to have pretty perfectly, except for maybe the end boss fight, pretty perfectly distributed the amount of ammo and health that you get, at least for my playstyle and, you know, how much damage I took and how often I used the guns, because I was... I was never at a point, there was never any point in the entire game where I was like, I have so many resources, I'm just good. I mean, I sort of thought that a couple times, but then quickly after that, I just like drained all of my my healing items and, and all my ammo really quickly. So at no time did I have just an absolute abundance of resources. Most of the time it was just like, I'm so glad that I just found some pistol ammo because, dear God, I need it. And that feeling persisted for the entire game. I was always glad just to find something. So that helped make the game feel more more desperate. I can't even imagine how hard this game would be if you played it on hard. I wonder what that does. Less resources or you just take more damage or something? I don't know, but this felt very difficult on just normal difficulty. I knew that the game wouldn't look amazing, uh, fidelity-wise, because it is on the original PlayStation 1. And it doesn't, fidelity-wise, but the amazing thing to me is just how little that affected my enjoyment of how it looks. I still think this game looks freaking great. It looks fantastic. Even being super low resolution and everything, and everything's really chunky looking and dithered, I actually love that look. It actually added to the aesthetic for me. It made things harder to see and more confusing and strange to look at. And the art direction is just really fantastic. Flipping between this normal town, which doesn't look entirely normal, but, you know, relatively normal. And then the other world where everything is just 
kind of like rusted and rotted to an absurd degree that you don't really see in real life generally. Like things don't usually get that rusted and that messed up looking. And yeah, it just, it looked wonderful. And I love the soundtrack so much. I was surprised by two things that I associate with the Silent Hill series that wasn't present in the first one. Um, the first one is the nurses that you encounter in Silent Hill 1 are, they, well, they just look pretty much, except for the weird growths on their back and their zombie-like behavior. Aside from that, they look fairly normal. Unlike when I think of the nurses in Silent Hill, I think of those, like, sexy nurses with all the cleavage and the blades and stuff, and actually they do have blades here in, in this first Silent Hill, but yeah, they're not all, like, weirdly sexy, which is good. I, I like it much more simpler and, and much more straightforward like this. And the other thing is when I think of Silent Hill, I think of Pyramid Head, right? That's like the biggest, that's like the biggest, most memorable character, I think, when I think of Silent Hill. And I'm surprised to find that it only exists in Silent Hill 2, or at least that's the first time it exists. It's not in the first one. All right, so that has been Silent Hill. As far as what future Silent Hill games I'm going to play, there are many of them. I definitely am going to play more. The question I have is whether I'm going to play Silent Hill 2 next or Silent Hill 3. I was originally thinking of starting with Silent Hill 3, but then I figured I should probably start at the beginning anyway. Plus, Silent Hill 3 is apparently a direct sequel to the first Silent Hill. So I think it's better that I, I played the first one. But I am wondering whether I should play Silent Hill 2. I know it's extremely good, and it's, I think, the best liked in the series. The only thing is, I've sort of been watching a occasional stream of Silent Hill 2, so I've seen a pretty good chunk of it. So I don't know if I want to play it or just skip straight to Silent Hill 3. But uh, yeah, definitely going to play a lot more Silent Hill. Alright, well, um, I have edited this so that you're just looking at the game results screen while I'm talking. And then I'm going to edit in the after credit sequence in just a second. And it's really weird. The after credit sequence is very, very strange. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me and enjoy. <laughs> 